Welcome back. In the last month and a half, three prominent free female leaders have resigned. That includes former New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern, Scotland's First Minister Nicola Sturgeon, and in the tech world, YouTube CEO Susan Wojcicki announced that she too was moving on. Here to talk about these resignations, very high profile resignations, and possible ramifications, the editor of Forbes Women, Maggie McGrath. Also joining us, Huma Abedin, Vice Chair of Forbes and Know Your Values 3050 Summit, which is, by the way, just one week away. We've got more to talk about that as well. But Maggie, let's talk about these resignations. What do you think they mean? I think it's easy to feel discouraged when you see these headlines, especially if you're considering the data that we saw last year from Lean In and McKinsey, which they coined the great breakup. If you remember, that showed that senior women were leaving the workplace at higher rates than senior men. So it all feels very concerning. However, if you take a step back and look at the data around the average tenure of a CEO, recruitment firm Corn Ferry estimates that it's five to seven years. And so if you look at these three departures, we see Jacinda Ardern served for five years, and both Sturgeon and Mojiki served for since 2014. So mm -hmm. it is high, prof high profile, but it's also part of the natural leadership cycle. So I don't think it's yet a cause for major concern. You know, these women have used certain language in their resignations that, that stood out to me um, as language men possibly wouldn't use, maybe would, allusion to burnout, references to family. Um, I actually think this is a good thing because the workplace gets better as we learn more about each other and what one needs in order to be retained for a long period of time. And also there is reason sometimes when you need to take a step sideways or back in order to move forward. Um, do you think there's a difference though in terms of the language these women were using compared to what men use, Maggie? So it struck me as different too, so I called a few different sources just for a gut check, and we all agreed. We're hard pressed to think of a man who said in the way that Jacinda Ardern said, I don't have enough left in the tank. I don't think mm -hmm. we hear that from many men. Uh, similarly, Nicola Sturgeon had said, I know what this job takes, I've given it my all, and I can only do that for so long. What these women are showing is emotional intelligence. And I think they serve as models here. I think we need to see more people who can recognize boundaries and communicate those boundaries to others. And I would note that in the private sector, we've seen surveys that show that upwards of 90% of US workers want to see compassionate leadership styles from their leaders. So while these women are leaving their leadership posts, I would argue that their resignations are leadership in action. Yeah, uh, and Huma, you spent your career in politics. You worked with Hillary Clinton very closely, an icon. Um, what does it say to you when we see resignations like this, and sometimes when they're replaced by men? Does it cause any concern? Look, I think this is very modern leadership in modern times. Being a woman in politics, even in normal circumstances, is pretty unforgiving. And I remember a time when showing any emotion as a woman politician was a sign of weakness. But here you have women who've governed uh, in the midst of a global pandemic in heightened political partisanship, uh, exacerbated by social media. So to be able to say, I have these mental health challenges, family issues, you know, what is good for my constituents, I think that's very good and healthy. But it is a warning. You know, I do think it's a warning for those of us who are interested in politics that there is much work to be done. You know, Brookings had a, um, a report, they, they've been studying the, this for the last 20 years that there's still an ambition gap when it comes to women for running for um, office in this country that even though we are 51 percent of the population less than a third of us are our nation's elected leaders right now so we have two women who've already said they're running for president in 2024 a record number of women elected governor we have to be very conscious about telling women they are qualified to run. It's a self-perception, but it's also society uh, telling women that they are qualified to run and that they should run. And that's a, a global thing, too. I mean, there are only 28 countries in the world that have currently women uh, heads of uh, government uh, and leaders. So I think it's a great sign of leadership, but also a reminder that we have to encourage uh, women, all women, but particularly young women, to get in the game. Yeah, and, and Maggie, I feel like there's a lot to be learned for, for companies here um, in terms of not only retaining great talent, how to do that, but making sure there's a bench. 
Indeed. I actually called Gloria Felt. You'll recognize her name because she is on the 2022 50 over 50. She's the founder of Take the Lead. It's a nonprofit dedicated to creating gender parity in all leadership roles. And I asked her point blank, is there a succession planning problem here? And she said, it doesn't have to be a disaster. It could be if we don't heed this moment. And what she said is we need to be taking women with us. And that's advice for men and for women. Look at the women who are on the younger rungs of the ladder at your organization. Who are the ones who are looking for opportunities, looking for growth? Find those women and help them identify those stretch projects. I can't tell you how many female founders and CEOs I talk to who cite the men who created opportunities for them and they took those opportunities and ran with them. So I think as long as we're mindful and as Gloria said, we bring other women with us, this moment can be a moment of lesson and not a moment of crisis. Well, this is exactly, Maggie and Huma, what we're going to be talking about, the challenges that women face in the workplace and in their lives at our upcoming 3050 Summit in Abu Dhabi, which is taking place on the days around International Women's Day. That's next week, starting March 7th through March 10th. And we've already announced a remarkable lineup of speakers, including Hillary Clinton, Catherine O'Hara, Billie Jean King, Gloria Steinem, Aisha Curry, Jessica Alba. It goes on and on, and also the First Lady of Ukraine. Uh, speaking of that, Huma, we're so excited that we'll be broadcasting Morning Joe live from Abu Dhabi for part of next week's uh, event. It includes an iconic conversation on Wednesday, which is International Women's Day, with several of those women who have fought tirelessly for women's rights. Tell our viewers what they can expect from this conversation. Well, we are calling it an iconic conversation because we have three women who are generational voices of leadership and change, Hillary Clinton, Billie Jean King, and Gloria Steinem. And they have led the way in terms of breaking barriers, breaking boundaries, breaking glass ceilings when it comes to politics, journalism, feminism, equality. Um, but I think they'd be the first to tell us that the work is yet to be done, that there's a lot more challenges that women face both in this country and around the world. And I think what we want to hear from them is the lessons they've learned, uh, you know, how they've overcome challenges, what they can inspire. It is a mentorship conference, what they can say that can inspire this next generation of entrepreneurs and leaders uh, about our future. And they're going to be joined, uh, as you mentioned, by a woman whose story is being written as we speak, the First Lady of Ukraine, mm. uh, Elena Zelenska, who has literally been thrust into the spotlight uh, as you know, she manages this conflict with, alongside her husband and uh, is a, both a symbol but also a, a voice uh, on behalf yeah. of this humanitarian crisis for women and children in her country. Huma Abedin and Maggie McGrath, I'll see you both next week in Abu Dhabi. Thank you. And for more on the 3050 Summit, head over to Forbes.com or knowyourvalue.com. We'd love to see you there.